Hey everyone, what is up? I am your friendly neighborhood, Eggs Over Here, and I'm here to review Arrow Season 7, Episode 11, Past Sins. There's going to be huge spoilers for the episode from this point on. So Arrow is continuing the unfortunate streak of heavily alluding to DC properties while not actually being able to say them. It happened for years with Batman, although we're getting over that now. It's still happening with Hal Jordan, and it's still happening with Wonder Woman 2 and Legend of Tomorrow, they're alluding to um, Themyscira and all of that without actually talking about Wonder Woman. But the first time ever, it feels like the show is being forced to delve backwards as they are unable to say the name of a property that they've been able to use before. YWB is seemingly losing their shit over the mere thought of Arrow saying the word Suicide Squad, together in a sentence by the way, really baffles me and it's more it was never more apparent than in this episode when Curtis attempted to say Suicide Squad but was quickly cut off halfway by Diglin Lila. Like, come on WB and DC. In the words of Connor Kent from Young Justice, get on board or get out of the way. Anyway, now that, that slight rant is over, I will get into the to actually talking about the episode. So this episode had a lot to juggle with. We had more setting up of the suicide oh sorry DC, I meant the ghost initiative as we begin to see the villains form from the uh, from the past show up to be on the new villain team. Joe Wilson, who is Slade's son and is now going by the name Kane Wolfman, as a little uh, heads up to the people that created him in the comics. We see the return of both China White and Carrie Cutter, also known as Cupid, for the first time since season 5. And the three members are also joined by Arrow's resident loser, the one, the only, Ricardo Diaz. Um, so we didn't get too much progress in this story, to be honest mainly just introducing us to this new inter iteration of the team and having us see that Curtis isn't on board with putting bombs in, in the team's heads, but he'll do it anyway. We did get the cool scene however where Curtis outs Diaz in some kind of VR fake computer world so that if Diaz ever wants to escape Argus can just pop him in that bad boy and there you go. Well the show tried to play it off the fake uh, world as the real world, we saw Diaz fake kill Curtis and the show wanted you to believe that Curtis was actually dead as it did the dramatic music and the zoom in on his body. Um, this just highlighted something that I never fully realised and it was just about how little I care about Curtis. Because when it showed him lying there dead I felt nothing. I was pretty sure he wasn't actually dead and somehow it'd all be a trick and I found myself just kind of thinking if this is how Curtis ends up dead on the show I'm honestly fine with it. it it's kind of a testament to the sad fact that writers on this show have made one of DC's smartest characters a complete bore to watch. Moving away from the Ghost Squad for a... Wait... The, the Suicide Initiative? No, that's not it. Oh, the Ghost Initiative, sorry. Well, moving away from that, we had an interesting plot involving Laurel facing demons from her past. Past sins, if you will. Now, while well, what we got was enjoyable and gave us some decent development for both her and Felicity, I feel like this was a really wasted opportunity. Something me and many other fans have been hoping for for the last three seasons was an episode completely devoted to Black Siren's backstory from Earth 2. We want to see her get her powers, go from being the person who was kind-hearted to the destroyed anti-hero after Oliver, Quentin and Sarah's deaths. I want to see her get caught in worse and worse crowds and really get an insight into who she is, inevitably leading up to her falling in with Zoom. And Bet Schwartz said that the current, or uh, Bet Schwartz, the current showrunner, actually alluded to the fact that we would be getting an episode like that this season, saying that an episode with Laurel flashbacks and one focused on her backstory was coming. When in actuality, this episode only featured one half a minute flashback that didn't actually mean much to the overall episode. And if this is the episode Beth was talking about, I'm going to be really disappointed. I thought it was nice however to learn that someone Laurel thought she killed on her earth didn't die at all, making her feel like somewhat less of a shitty person, like the way people are viewing her on this earth. Something I have liked about Laurel is that she's been slowly integrating herself into the team arrow dynamic, rather than one season she's a bad guy, the next she's a hero, like has been done to oh so many other characters on this show. One thing I thought was done well though was that the, uh, the story with Felicity, that Felicity's there to be a friend to Laurel and when Laura was officially recognized as D8, Felicity was the first one there right to celebrate with her. I think building this up is great, I want to see it continue more, and it's nice to see that Laurel still has a true friend on this earth. The main plot of this episode ever didn't revolve around the suicide initiative, or Laurel's background. It revolved around Oliver having to deal with the son of the bodyguard who was shot by Robert in the pilot. Yup, Sam Hackett. Now to be honest, this didn't surprise me much at all. I knew it was coming. I, well, I didn't know it was coming, but it, it's obvious. 
It made sense. I knew there was a reason that they name dropped David Hackett so much in episode 5. Hackett had never been given a name in the show up until that episode. As a matter of fact, I actually think outside of seeing Robert shoot him in the pilot, he was never really given a mention up until this season. It was only my father shot himself in the head, never my father shot his bodyguard and then shot himself in the head. So I actually think it would have been more jarring had we gotten a bunch of references to David and then not have gotten any follow-ups about it. I do think the story with Sam was a little wasted though, and definitely did not reach the potential it could have. That said however, this is something I'm happy we, re we revisited, because of course this will come back to bite the Queen family in the ass. This guy's father died for pretty much no reason, I'd be pissed too if I found out something happened to my family like this. A standout scene from this story was the final scene in the police precinct. I thought having all of the officers be given a choice to kill Oliver or die themselves was a really interesting ultimatum. It was also great to see that the officers just jumped out of the way the second the power came back on, like they knew Oliver was about to beat this guy's ass, and it was nice that Oliver took him down instantly rather than see a fight that wouldn't have made any sense. And unfortunately another slightly disappointing thing this week is that Emiko was relegated to one or two side scenes. One's at the start and one's at the end. And it's, but it seems that her and Ollie are going to move forward and get to know each other, which I like. But the last scene of, the, of last episode and the promo for this one both made it seem like the two characters interacting would have been a substantial part of this episode. I honestly would have rather us to continue the Amiko and Ollie story and they could change out any of the other three storylines and I would have been fine. Finally, it was nice to see a new trick arrow come into play in the form of a net arrow. It seems that someone is targeting the former vigilantes as both Laurel and Dinah received some rather threatening notes. It seems we'll find out next episode who is leaving these around, and with that episode being the 150th, I am truly excited. Overall, I don't think this was a bad episode at all, and I was actually really enjoying it for the most part. I didn't mean to rant as much as I did, but a lot of these storylines this week are just shadows of what they could have been. It seems like they really didn't want to give an episode to fleshing out Laurel, so instead we get a side plot that doesn't really go anywhere and do anything interesting. They didn't want to go full Suicide Squad just yet, so we get a C plot of seeing them all get their bombs put in their heads. And besides some character development, I feel like this was all just set up for other episodes yet to come. And honestly, this episode, this was an episode that I won't be bursting at the seams to rewatch anytime soon. So I would give this a 6.5 out of 10. But thank you very much for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you, and have a great day.